Trinity College Television presents The Trinity Show with Brad Whitaker Brought to you by the SGA I'm Max McCauley Tonight's episode Four score and seven flat brothers And here's your host Brad Whitaker show i'm glad you guys were able to come out tonight now before i get started i just want to say to people at home watching this in front of your computer screens please take your hand out of your pants that's not how a lady should act now i thought i would start this program by issuing an apology to the students at trinity who are big fans of the show and trust me there's lots of them i promised that this would be a monthly program and yet, I haven't made a show in nearly three months. I've actually been down in Washington, studying journalism and surrounding myself around some of the world's most powerful politicians, like Barack Obama, Eric Cantor, and Kevin Spacey. <laughs> and while I originally planned to shoot the show down in the nation's capital, I quickly came to the realization that in DC, jokes about Hartford locals don't quite carry the same weight. <laughs> But being down in Washington means I have to be on top of my game. And because I'm a journalist now, I've learned to ask important questions like, what's a pope? <laughs> Is it that chunky stuff you sometimes find in your orange juice? Because <laughs> if so, I want nothing to do with it. Also, who decided the Harlem Shake was cool? I knew this trend had gone too far once charity groups for Parkinson's disease started making videos. <laughs> yes, because that's exactly what Parkinson's looks like. But my real question is, what are we going to do about North Korea? I thought after Kim Jong-il died, they wouldn't be as insane. But instead, they replaced him with his even crazier crackpot son, Kim Jong-un, who continues to conduct public executions, send people to prison camps, and tour the world promoting his hit single, Gangnam Style. <laughs> oh wait, what's that? Oh, that's South Korea. All right, same thing, same thing. But look, North Korea is developing nuclear weapons. This really should be a first priority for the Obama administration. Maybe they should send a newly appointed Secretary of State John Kerry to clean up the mess. Or now that John McCain's done screaming at Chuck Hagel, maybe send him in. The fact of the matter is we really should have someone go talk to the North Koreans. Top of the news in North Korea. The first American to meet Kim Jong-un, not John Kerry or even Jimmy Carter. Nope, it was Dennis Rodman, AKA the one. They watch basketball. Kim is a big fan, but that was just the beginning. Okay, that wouldn't have been my first choice. Maybe if you wanted to go with a non-political figure, you could send in a Ben Affleck, a George Clooney, or if you're looking for an athlete, perhaps Meta World Peace. I mean, his name is World Peace. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, all right. I'll give Rodman a chance. Let's hear what he has to say about North Korea's dictator. He just... He's a great guy. He's just a great guy. Okay. If you haven't figured it out by now, I don't think Dennis Rodman is taking this as seriously as we'd like him to. But maybe Mr. Rodman is on to something. And how can you not take a guy wearing a money jacket seriously? <laughs> I'm just curious though. How can Rodman justify hanging out with the world's most evil dictator? It's just like we do over here in America, right? It's amazing that we have presidents over here do the same thing, right? It's amazing that Bill Clinton could do one thing, have sex with his secretary and do one thing, and really get away with it and still be powerful. Well said, well said. <laughs> Speaking of dictators, the Trinity men's squash team recently won the national title for the 14th time in the last 15 years. Woo. Proving once again, proving once again that in the preppiest of all preppy sports, we will out-prep your preppy school by celebrating dress as if we were attending a Hufflepuff pep rally. <laughs> now this once again proves that Trinity College is the preppiest school in the country. I mean, we are the College of St. Anthony's Hall. Yale may have their Skull and Bones Society, but do they check their pledges bank statement in order for them to get in? 
I don't think so. <laughs> and sure, maybe it's unfair to compare the hall to a frat that makes their pledges do things like masturbate in a coffin while recounting their sexual exploits. But why would the Hall brothers do such a thing? Trinity already has a frat on campus that does that. <laughs> Losing friends by the second. But like I was saying, if you're one of the lucky few able to get into a frat party at the hall, you would know that these elite frat brothers are America's future. And in no way is that reason to be discouraged about America's future. <laughs> these are the sons, and I believe there's a couple daughters in there. Okay, okay. I know I've been using the term frat brother, and I, I really should include both genders. But come on, let's face it. The new frat sisters are kind of what the Laker girls are to the Lakers. Although right now it's hard to tell who's better at basketball. <laughs> but like I was saying, these frat brothers are more than prepared to face America's problems. These are the sons and daughters of big name Wall Street executives. So you know you can trust them. So I commend the Trinity squash team and St. Anthony's Hall for keeping this great institution the preppiest school in the nation. And just a word of advice to some of the underclassmen out there, if you ever feel like someone from the hall maybe took advantage of you, but you're too afraid to speak out about it, it's okay. Just blame some Hartford locals. Don't worry, the school will get right behind you. <laughs> we'll be right back. show. Abraham Lincoln has been in the news a lot lately. Whether it's been comparisons between Obama and the 16th president, or Daniel Day-Lewis winning an Academy Award for his portrayal of Lincoln. But right now, he's in the news for more personal reasons. Here's Max McCauley with more. Abraham Lincoln was a lover of many things. He loved America. He loved liberty. But did he also love penis? That's right. Abraham Lincoln may have been a fairy. Now, before you dismiss the idea completely, think about it. Wasn't Lincoln constantly talking about loving his fellow man? But before I leap to any conclusions, I decided I should get the other side of the story. And how better to clear this up than to ask the man himself. But after some book reading, I discovered that Abraham Lincoln is dead. <laughs> so I did the best I could. I'd like to thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me, Mr. Lincoln. <laughs> for my first question, I was wondering, getting shot in a theater, doesn't that seem a little gay? <laughs> Shit. He's not saying anything. Maybe I had gone too personal too fast. I needed to lead off with some foreplay. So what was it like working with Tommy Lee Jones in the White House? Uh, that must have been incredible. He, he comes off as a bit of a curmudgeon, but you can tell he's a blast to work with. Was he a blast to work with? <laughs> Uh, so, so Obama's uh, thinking about getting rid of the penny. How messed up is that, right? <laughs> nice payback. <laughs> the icebreakers weren't working. It was time to dive right into the personal questions. All right, Mr. Lincoln, I'm done pussyfooting around. Have you ever let another man put his log in your cabin? <laughs> if you know what I mean. I can't, I can't do anything if you're not going to answer any fucking questions. <laughs> he's a fucking dick. I know he's right there, but he isn't giving me shit. You know, you know, honest Abe, honestly, you're a fucking asshole. 
Over time, I grew frustrated with President Lincoln. <laughs> hey, you know, just one quick thing to consider. Maybe if you weren't so shiny, everyone wouldn't think you were gay. At a certain point, think about it. I lost my temper. <laughs> I guess I overreacted, but he really wasn't giving me any choice. You hardly made any difference. <laughs> I never found out if Lincoln was gay. Get away. But he's definitely an asshole. <laughs> Let's give it up for Max McCauley! We'll be right back! Tonight is a very fine looking young gentleman. Please welcome to the show, Mike McLean! Yeah. How you doing, buddy? Hey, how you doing? Have a seat. Thank you. So, Mike McLean. Yes, sir. It says here that you studied abroad in South Africa. That's correct. You are a rock climber. You taught English to kosher kids. I don't know what that means, but whatever. <laughs> you lived with the, the Dakota Sioux for a couple weeks, and you backpacked the Appalachian Trail. Well, part of it, yeah. Okay. I gotta ask, you're, you're putting the rest of us to shame. Why, why do you have to be such a show-off all the time? <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm a single history major, so I've got a lot of time to kill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what are you studying in history? Um, well, I want to do American history. Uh, that mm -hmm. was spot on historical analysis. American history is good. Yeah. It's definitely one of my top ten favorite countries. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, are you, how is South Africa though? I hear they have a bit of an AIDS problem over there, is that right? <laughs> that, that would be one of the problems. Yeah. Yes. Um, Did you get your uh, AIDS shot before you went there? <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, it was a great experience. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, no, it was, yeah, it was fantastic. I got to Rockland Table Mountain. Uh, taught English to these, these great kids. Uh, yeah. Hitchhiked with racists to a line farm one day. Really? Yeah. Had, things, how things how did you know they were racist? Um, well, they the first thing they asked me was, because I was hitchhiking, uh, what do you think of the British? Which they don't like the British. Oh. And, uh, and what do you think of the Keppers? Which is their word for the N word and totally not okay to ask someone. Oh, okay. I was like, I'm so just are you going to get in trouble? Are, are we going to get in trouble because you just said that word right now? Uh, in South Africa, yeah. Okay, so don't go to South Africa after this show. Probably. I'll remember that. What's the, what's the club life like in South Africa? Um, it, well, it's interesting. Hey, did you see Nelson Mandela drunk? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for one thing, alcohol is just ridiculously cheap. Like their standard oh, I'm beer. Going there. <laughs> their standard beer is about this big. It's six percent alcohol, uh -huh. so it messes you up, and it costs about fifteen rands, which is like a dollar fifty. Well, okay. So, you didn't get AIDS or anything, I'm glad. Um, <laughs> what are you doing on campus now? I, I, I feel like I haven't seen you in a coon's age. It's been so long. It's, it's too long, man. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm keeping busy. I've been doing, uh, uh, yeah, I, I see, you can't take the list away. I can't. No, no. <laughs> yeah, still doing now the Now try it without the list. All right, all right. Still doing the climbing club. Uh, I'm doing something called Boxing with Boris, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, just this crazy Russian guy running a boxing class. Uh, Are you a boxing fan? Like, what, why'd you go woo? <laughs> oh, you're in the boxing? Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. All right, go um, on. <laughs> I've been doing a little stand-up comedy. Uh, I'm still doing the African Development Coalition. Mm -hmm. uh, this summer, we're going to try to build grinding mills in a refugee camp in Uganda. Okay. Uh, doing the Honor Council. Uh, next year, I'm going to be a student admissions associate, so that's cool. First-year mentor. Mike, I don't do anything. You're making me look awful <laughs> right now. I'm just going to tell you that. So, yeah, yeah, keeping busy, for sure. That's good. Uh, how's the social life? I know you, you wrote a uh, very controversial piece last year yeah, I got some in the Four comments. Legs about the social life. What were you trying to say there? Well, I think, I think it's the, the social debate is, is very mm -hmm. interesting. First of all, I think both sides have very valid perspectives. One side no, is they saying... No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, one side is saying that there's a culture of partying that could lead to academic and social problems. The other side is saying, listen, we're being scapegoated and we might be avoiding the real issues. Mm -hmm. But what I love about this debate is you don't hear any of that. 
you never hear any of those articulate arguments. Okay. Uh, like this, this, this is my favorite one. Is uh, yeah, well, if you don't like frats, you never should have come to Trinity. I don't know why I'm doing a southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point. I was like, what? what's he doing? I don't know why that, it seemed right. Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I'm like, what's what southern kind of, folk at Trinity? What yeah, kind of logic right. is that, though? That you don't like one thing? So, to, like, I don't like yeah. the KKK, but I'll still go to Alabama. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> are they still there? I, I assume so. I've never oh. been. I hear they're cleaning up their act. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So okay. Well, that's or, good. Or, or the my other favorite is. Uh, well, if you get rid of frats, you're forcing us to drink and drive. Really, you're you're being you're being forced to drink and drive. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think that maybe you're just a piece of shit for doing that? <laughs> and maybe you're just a bad human being. That's like saying that distributing free condoms forces people to rape. Like, where where is the causality there? I mean, I can oh. I can see that argument. You know what this means? <laughs> yeah, we, this is a no rape zone, Mike. We don't yeah. talk about rape. <laughs> It's always good to bring up rape on a TV show. <laughs> it's, always, it's always a popular subject. Yes. It's always a popular subject. Well, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. You're, you're a lot of fun. And what are you doing after? Um, that's a good question. What are you doing after? You want to go to the bar? Yeah. All right, let's go to the bar. <laughs> All right, Mike McLean, everybody. We'll be right back. Well, that's our show. Um, thank you guys for coming out. Stay tuned for some more Trin TV. Goodbye, everybody. Woo!